वेलकम टू इंडी चैट इट्स अ प्रोग्राम वेयर वी डिस्कस वेरियस इश्यूज इन डेप्थ टूडे वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस बायोग्राफी ऑफ जॉर्ज फर्नांडिस दिस इज अ वेल रिसर्च बुक बाय राहुल रामगुंडम मिस्टर राहुल रामगुंडम हैज ऑलरेडी रिटर्न टू पब्लिश टू बुक्स वन इज गांधीज खादी एंड अनदर वन इज इंक्लूडिंग सोशली एक्सक्लूडेड and this is his third book this is a kind of well researched biography i would say but it has been written like a novel it has the plot subplots interviews then love stories adventures everything and each and every statement each and every word i would say has been substantiated by the huge reference material so each and every word that he is actually carefully weighed each and every word while writing this book and i'm really thank you mr i welcome you to this uh, program mr rahul ramgundam thank you thank you yeah. so much uh, this is a wonderful book and to talk about this book actually i had been uh in my i was also associated with uh, george fernandes uh in various not as a uh, i was a small time uh, activist then and when he had come to bombay for his brain surgery that time i had means we are few or three four of us mr bhai vaidya sanjeev sani uh, mohammad khadars and myself had gone to meet him and he said uh, doctor has asked him not to discuss politics so all of us others were actually they don't know what to talk then and that time george was reading gabriel garcia marquez book and that time this uh, uh, salman rushdie's book that uh, satnik versus controversy was on and so he was talking about actually the book and i said have you read this uh, um, harun and the sea of stories it's a actually Salman. children's book, yes. book for children by rushdie no he said i have missed it please please send me the copy <laughs> and i gave him the copy and he of course uh, reciprocated that gesture so i was also means a kind of quite um, uh, you know college days we were quite influenced by george and as you rightly said he was really a passionate uh, speaker particularly and he has so much of uh, command over what language hindi marathi english tulu just you name it and he was very comfortable and quite passionate leader and yeah militant activist militant trade unionist basically and so here in uh, mumbai uh, lok satta lok satta actually gave him the title band samrat that time so he was the first one and i think basaheb thakre was also envious of george fernandes because he was the first man to bring bombay uh, to stand still and later actually it was picked up by bal thakre but it was george and george used to uh, call bal thakre as bal not bala saheb or something but I, i have not come across any other political leader who would be talking to bal thakre in such terms anyways so so my first question is what actually prompted you to take up this project three reasons first uh, George's uh, iconic photograph of 1975, of time 76, in fact, when he's arrested in Delhi, and that photograph where he is putting his hands up and his hands are tied to his body by chain, uh, I think uh, that was uh, a photograph which I had not seen in the time when it was actually taken, but I was uh, I saw it 1985 when I was a student, and I saw I saw it in the in the times of in the India Today. of uh, annual uh, uh, issue in that that photograph was there and uh, india today perhaps was celebrating its 1 uh, 10th decade uh, well, a decade and uh, of its publication and so they had put the whole major events of of last decade in their uh, december issue and i was a student i saw that photograph and i was really inspired by seeing that photograph and it was almost like i have written in the book it's almost like a uh, the very much 
very much equal to a kind of photograph that we see in history like Bhagat Singh sitting on the cot and waiting for gallows you know so it was that one was that the second was um, I had just completed Gandhi's Khadi and I wanted to look at uh, uh, post independence history and I thought that there can be no one uh, in this country who uh, whose life and action begins in 1950 and ends in 2004 in that sense, yeah. in, in, in the governmental sense. He dies in 2019, but he remained a figure who really um, was not in the Congress regime, uh, he, because the Congress was the dominant party at that time, uh, but he was someone who was throughout this, from 1950 to 2004, throughout in the public eye. And he was taking positions which were very, um, you know, not, I would not say controversial, but very meaningful positions in a lot of issues. And third important uh, cause was that uh, he was a man who fought against injustice and for justice across the world, not just in India. And he would be the first one to go into any, any place where there is a human crisis that has happened. And so these three things, in fact, I wanted to look at uh, post-independence history. So I wanted to look at the from the life of George Fernandez. I wanted to explore because I I teach in a center for uh, center for studies in social exclusion and inclusive policy. So I wanted to study a minority leader in that sense, not exactly in in, in a, because George never considered himself minority. I have not considered him in the book as a minority, but he actually he came from a minority community. So here was a man who, in fact, uh, reinstated uh, uh, brought himself into the mainstream of Indian politics uh, without being from the mainstream regions. He did not belong to Hindi heartland. He did not speak, uh, he did not be, uh, he, did, he was not uh, a Hindu in that sense. And he didn't come from the, from the, uh, from the caste, any caste uh, background, you know, of that kind of a caste, which, which is a, which is in fact dominant caste. We have been ruled by the Brahmins for many, many years and years together. So George was somebody who came from a marginal region that is a Mangalore. He spoke a one a language which was a marginal language because there were only few people speaking that language compared to Hindi and other things. So Konkani and third he was a man came from a minority religion that is from Christianity. So these uh, because I came from social, Center for Social Exclu Exclusion and Inclusive Policy I thought that uh, this will serve my academic interest as well as my interest in the post-independence history. So I, I looked into that. Okay. So, uh, because, yeah, means we were all actually in awe when George actually came to, means when he was in Bombay, I still, I, mean, I was too small, I think I was just seven years old when he fought his first election 67. and 67. And that time, in I was staying in South Mumbai and that too in some strong, small uh, wadi, we call it, uh, small hamlet. And there, the, the local gunda, some actually, Torn out, torn out well, all George posters in particular area, and in our area means in that area this he was a kind of means terror actually that local gunda who all dada we used to call it Barka dada, so he was a terror, and I still remember I was such, such a small kid and George came with uh, two of his activists, only two activists but his workers whatever his workers party workers. And he knocked the door of that <laughs> or Dada or Gunda or whoever, terror. And he opened the door and he started actually prostrating before George. I'm sorry, Wapas Kabi Nahi Karenge Vagare. So all that George said is just, Jitne posters paade, Utne laga do. And he walked away. I was so impressed that he was such a terror in that area. He comes only with two, and that two, not kind of. A, um, Bahubali kind of people, that is a simple activist. And anyway, at that time, my father was working for him, and he told me that then that George used to move around in the city almost uh, overnight, means he would sleep at Azad Maidan for a while in the morning, early in the morning at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. He will rest there for, say, for six or two or three hours. And this Ranjit Banu was his then uh, very close associate. And Ranjit Banu had the car, so he would park his car outside the Azad Maidan. And George would go to Azad Maidan to have a sound sleep. 
instead of any home. Anyways, so uh, my question was actually this means um, you are saying that man, the, means you have traced the history of Congress Socialist Party and particularly the the, the contradictions actually um, within the means uh, formation of Congress Socialist Party. I mean, according to you, it did not take place in Nasik jail or neither in Patna where the first uh, this was uh, or a convention of socialists was organized which was addressed by um, Acharya Narendra Dev but you say that means uh, this is what you say that it was the uh, actually means conceived in Jawaharlal Nehru's boardroom. So will Anand you please, Bowen. yeah, yes. Anand Bowen, yeah. will you please throw some light on this? You see the Nehru, Nehru in 1930s is, is, a, is a leader of uh, future. And he is seen as a young India's uh, embodiment. And in fact, Gandhi uh, in 20s, despite the kind of absurds that happened in non-cooperation movement, uh, Gandhi was uh, uh, seen as a person who was repeating the same thing in, again and again. And throughout his life, he remained uh, uh, loyal to three constructive agendas in his, in his politics. One was Hindu-Muslim unity. The second was uh, untouchability removal and the third and that is a khadi and Gandhi throughout his life in fact throughout his political life in India remained true to these three agendas. Yeah. Now in his all, all his writings if you see this whole, his writings are collected in a hundred volume yeah. if you read that hundred volume which each volume comprises of some 500 pages if you read that volume you will see that he is repeating the same thing again and again and, and somehow the young India was little impatient with him you know in that sense in 1930s and this young Young India were mostly socialists. Hmm. Nehru was a man who, in fact, wrote a very uh, angry letter to to Gandhi, who said that uh, we can't go for any movement at this point because uh, India is not yet ready. Hmm. And so Gandhi, uh, Nehru wanted India to be, you know, to be uh, to be uh, to declare itself as independent, uh, total freedom, and all kind of a thing to have a complete independence. Uh, you know, Purn Swaraj kind of an era. And so Gandhi was against that kind of a thing, and therefore, uh, young India. Uh, people like Jayaprakash Narayan and other people, they all went to Nehru and Nehru became the leader of, uh, of, of uh, and uh, Nehru was also uh, had traveled abroad and uh, been uh, some kind of a socialist in that sense and so he was a man who became the leader and the embodiment of an idea which meant that the property, the national property has to be distributed equally among the people irrespective of their caste, irrespective of their class and irrespective of their anything for that matter, a creed or whatever. So this idea was a very fascinating idea and it appealed to many people that uh, properties do not belong to just rich or poor but people uh, but everybody has a right over the property of the nation and the, everybody has a right to uh, to be in a in a in a, in a modicum of uh, of uh, of prosperity you know kind of a thing uh, Nehru therefore was one man who was seen as somebody who can be an alternative to Gandhi for that matter and many of these young men in fact they were supporting him Gandhi was of course a big figure and Nehru was a small figure at that time but he was still thinking in that sense. Uh, and therefore in some sense uh, Gandhi's refusal in fact which would be seen as a refusal but which is not in fact a refusal because the salt satyagraha was all about putting the poverty and poor back into the agenda because you are talking about the salt. Uh, so uh, and that was something a great master stroke of Gandhi but uh, somehow they felt that Gandhi is not talking enough about Jamindars, Gandhi is not talking enough about the capitalist, Gandhi is not talking about the inequality that exists within the society, all kind of a things that were being talked about and they were a little impatient in that sense in concluding in such fashion. I remember Jayaprakash Narayan saying that you know uh, that you keep repeating the same thing again and again and this where, where it's not really attractive enough and it becomes some kind of a boring thing that you keep doing that and so therefore Nehru was the was the man who would who would unlash socialism in India and all these people were followers of Nehru mm -hmm. and uh, therefore Nehru really dictated their politics mm -hmm. you know all through 30s and 40s Nehru is a leader of the socialist bloc and this socialist bloc exists within the Congress yes Okay, and so the here is a, a big block of socialists 
supposedly followers of Nehru and they were also bulwark of Nehru's politics against Gandhi for that matter. Okay. So there is a, let's see that the independence struggle yeah, is not yeah. something a plain story. You know? right. there, there are a lot right. of layers into it. So, uh, so, so therefore, I, I have not only concluded there have because of both of these people, Lohia as well as Ram uh, uh, Jayaprakash, they were living in Anand Bhavan. Yeah. They were the people who were who were protégés of, yeah. of, of Nehru for that matter. And so the idea of socialism in this country, largely brought by Nehru, propagated by largely by nehru and the and the people who took over the idea of socialism they also were followers of nehru and they all were in fact living in nehru's place they were nehru's and nehru was a president in 34 30, 35 36 of the congress so he was a man who was dictating the politics of this bunch of the people who were mostly foreign educated yeah. who has traveled abroad who spoke english well who had no roots in the villages of india who did not understand this country at all okay and therefore they were the people who were nehru's uh, followers and Nehru won, Nehru became the leader and Nehru in fact backed this idea of forming Congress Socialist Party yeah. which was not liked by anybody for that matter. So was it the firing line of Nehru Congress exactly. Socialist Party? Exactly it was it was some kind of a uh, some kind of a, a, a some kind of a firing line against Gandhi's politics. Yeah. Okay, and uh, and somehow it was some kind of a uh, but, but the relationship of the socialists with the Gandhi as well as Nehru went through up and down. Yes. Uh, it changed. In fact, by the 1948, if you see, uh, Gandhi was the biggest supporter of them. Yes. And Nehru, in fact, wanted them to get out of the of the Congress, you know, because of any reasons. But they, I have mentioned about it, the fact that uh, by by uh, by getting uh, the Congress socialist uh, members away from the Congress or splitting it, he gets uh, another support from them in his fight against uh, Balabai Patel. Hmm. Yeah, okay. right. You know, so because uh, when Gandhi is no, socialists were the most critical, right. uh, most uh, ardent or most aggressive critics of the Sardar, Sardar Patel. Sardar Patel, exactly. And uh, and Sardar Bhai Patel, in 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 his gracious way, he said that okay, fine. It's like you know, Belgari me ham ja rahe hain aur niche me Belgari ki niche me jo hai kutta jo bhongta rata hai. It's like that, you know, kind of a thing. Socialists are like that because he was not worried about their criticism because their criticism really did not go beyond the newspapers let me tell you you know it, it was it was mostly the newspapers uh, people of this country were more uh, you know uh, you know uh, in uh, enamored by by gandhi and um, and patel and other people that way but they were the vociferous critique of gandhi they were also very good articulative people yeah. they could articulate they were writers uh, they used to run their journal that time and they were a group, group of the people who were bonded together so in some sense uh, um, their relationship with Nehru, which was very good in the beginning, slowly changed. For some people, it remained like yes. Ashoka Mehta and uh, and Achut Patwardhan. They all, in fact, Achut Patwardhan went out of the politics because yep. the socialists started criticizing yes. Nehru. In fact, yes. Achut Patwardhan, I was with Achut Patwardhan for a month or so yeah. as his uh, personal assistant, PA, and he told me that uh, whatever socialism is today in India is because of Nehru. That's right. And, and he went out of the politics yeah. because he could not really bear the fact that Nehru could be criticized by other people. Actually, that um, uh, that um, Ashok Mehta's thesis, Ms. Yeah. Ashok Mehta and this Achyut Patwardhan were very close. That's they right. have written one book also, Communal Triangle, okay. um, in which actually uh, they have discussed this Hindu-Muslim issue and that how British are responsible. So they, they are actually very close, Achyut right. Patwardhan and Ashok Mehta. And yeah, Achyut Patwardhan was also party to that this is uh, compulsions in backward okay, economy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Political compulsions. Yeah, political in compulsions right. in yes. backward yes. economy. Yes. He was also party sure, to that. Sure, sure. Anyways, well, uh, my, 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 I asked you the, for this, that what was the actual means the relationship of socialists yeah. with Congress and communists? You see, the because uh, that because these are the, these socialists were actually all Marxists. Yeah, yeah. Basically, they were Marxists. May particularly. This, when I talk to JP, so JP said we had three kinds of socialists. One is Marxian. He could not. He did not say Marxist. He called. Marxian, he used yeah. to call him himself as a Marxian. That's right. He said I'm Marxian, then French socialist, and third was Fabian or the British socialist. So according to him, this uh, Loya was French socialist. Then. 
और अशोक मेहता वॉज ब्रिटिश सोशलिस्ट एंड ही वॉज मार्क्सियन ही एंड नरेंद्र देव वेर मार्क्सियन बट द प्रॉब्लम इज मीन्स देर रिलीज मीन्स दे वॉन्टेड टू एक्चुअली हैव द रेवल्यूशन वर्किंग क्लास रेवल्यूशन फॉर विच they were looking they were expecting some support from communist russia that's right that's right yeah. at the same time they had actually they were associated means they were not means they were very much in the uh, congress yes, of for course. this so yeah. but they could not actually mean this equidistance um, they actually could not keep and finally it means how do you look at it means their relationship with a with congress b with uh, uh, communist because uh, that actually drove them towards bjp i suppose so can you throw some light in, on that in fact uh, you see the, 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 they were organizationally within the congress yes. okay so the congress was their mother in fact where they were born and, and nurtured and uh, ideologically organizationally while they were in the congress ideologically they were much more closer to marxist right. okay and so the cpi was always some kind of a fantasy for them they wanted to be part of it and and throughout the freedom movement you would see sometimes cpi merging does itself yeah. sometimes they breaking away from it you know kind of a thing that is happening around you know so while the organizationally they were they were a, a part of a, a congress ideologically they were closer to marxists mm-hmm. and this created a situation whereby they would uh, go on criticizing congress because of its conservativeness and because of its backwardness and because of its gandhi as a conservative leadership and all and they always wanted to bring the social, uh, the communist into their own organization and this was something fatal in some sense it was it really sowed the seeds of their collapse okay mm-hmm. and that happened why because you are in a organization which is whom you are always critiquing as conservative as somebody who is a backward who is not revolutionary enough and on the other hand you want to associate yourself with somebody who is in fact actually your ideological and organizational competitor mm. so you are competing with the communists yeah. for a for a, this country is largely poverty you know so you wanted to bring about the equality of economic income and all kind of a thing so you are trying to compete with a party in a way and also ideologically trying to affiliate with that party and here another mother organization which is in fact nurturing you but you are calling the mother as a very conservative you yeah. want to break away from there and so this is the kind of a fatal contradiction in their approach which created lot of problems for okay. them and this ended up uh, this whole confusion it created so much confusion ideological as well as organizational so that even when you are a group there are some people who are very attached to the congress yeah. there are some people who are very attached to the marxists yeah. and they have no stability neither thought wise nor organizationally wise organizational wise and so this again i i have a feeling this whole confusion and that's what gandhi even used to say that i love socialism socialism is a very intoxicating idea but i fear all intoxicants <laughs> okay that is the gandhi's thing you know he says like that so so the point what i uh, socialism in india in fact got later defined differently by lohia and other yes. people but in during the freedom struggle yes. you see 1931 uh, or 33 just before the congress socialist party gets formed Jepikas writes a full-fledged essay why wow. socialism in India wow. is needed. You know, point. Why, why socialism? That's the title. That's the title. You know, why socialism? And this is in fact part of his collected work as well. The point I'm trying to say that, and and there are so much convincing arguments for that. He is trying to convince the reader that, and all these. argument that he puts in 1930 as a as a his argument as something which he talks about very convincingly same arguments are again turned back means you 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 turn around and then say that why socialism not socialism but sarvodaya uh-huh. you know so yes socialism to sarvodaya the travel of of journey of 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 uh, our jayprakash narayan yes. is shows that the man had no roots of understanding of indian society or indian indian people in that sense and he was floating on certain fashionable ideas of the time 
okay and he was a young i let's understand that he was a young but he was a projected by the people by his his wife was a uh, gandhi's ashram mate uh, and she had under the inspiration of gandhi she had taken a celibacy vow and uh, nehru was the biggest supporter he used to call themselves bhai bhai you know kind of a thing he used to call bhai he used to call bhai and so he had a momentous backing of uh, big people of this country Jay Prakash Narayan is a failure from that kind of an idea where he had such a such a great backing to his career and therefore it can be said that his career is in some way reflection about a a gargantuan image of self without the reality of conviction mm. you know that is the so no because this actually this legacy or this um, contradiction yeah. actually if, i think well, don't you think it is one of the may it contributed to george downfall or george or socialist uh, coming up uh, ganging up with the rss no it has a history let me tell you uh, what happens that uh, that uh, uh, nehru is a socialist he is a prime minister of the country now in fact and so he can he can formulate the policies and and eat you away you know completely so he is not only eating away the congress is not only eating away the leadership it is also eating away the cadre of socialists okay so every policy pronunciation of of jawahar nehru or indira gandhi dents socialist survival socialists begin to deplete their own rank and file and they start going towards congress because the they give the slogan slogan of uh, garibi hatao that's the indira gandhi slogan gari uh, bank nationalization that's one thing in and and then uh, nehru is himself is a embodiment he doesn't have to do any policy statement to make to tell himself that he's a socialist but his image is a socialist so you have uh, uh, in some sense you have uh, um, these two prime ministers in fact uh, adopted each and every policy like like uh, like uh, the abolition of uh, of princess pride yeah, yeah. purposes you know so all these kind of a, a slogans which were socialist slogans bank nationalization and all kind of a thing or uh, these were adopted by the congress and in the process of adopting that thing every time they made a policy which dented at the socialist uh, manifesto a bunch of people left the socialist cadre and joined congress so what was happening that you need to in politics you need to be a steadfast opposition to your ruling regime if you have some kind of a affinity then you are closer to ruling regime not to the opposition a position in the democracy requires to take a steadfast position that you are opposed no matter what happens you are opposed to the regime that is ruling socialists kept on losing on that front there were always a people group of the people who wanted to go away and join the congress and there were always some people who were thinking about George was from the tradition of Lohia who thought that if democracy in this country has to survive if there has to be an opposition and congress has to be displaced from the ruling stature opposition has to strengthen itself and in the process of opposition he devised a tactics called non congressism in which the congress was to opposed by everyone by everyone means from the left to right you have a communist party as well and you have a jan sangh as well so and in between you have a socialist party and other people the, with this idea when lohia started george is a disciple of lohia and he won his his non congressism is seen throughout his life in fact the first he was a socialist a lohia disciple so he remained with almost true to the lohia's point that congressism ha congress has to be defeated because somehow many causes of this country's problems are into the congress you know so congress has to be defeated that was the one point second to defeat that you need to forge alliances with the other political parties which who might be ideologically very against you but you have to bring them because you are fighting congress so that was the second point in which uh, non congressism got slowly with this ideological and organizational depletion of 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 the socialist party by the time george gained ascendance or gained the position party position socialist party had already depleted itself there were nobody left as such 
during the Lohia, Lohia died in 1967, after the death of Lohia, there was nobody in that sense who could have a national image or national national uh, presence, which in fact George tried to try yeah, to Yeah, of course, but, but, but so far as George means, yeah, I, I agree with you, but uh, so far as the socialist program of Congress, but these Congress governments with whom actually George fought as a labor leader, it was such a repressive regime, actually. In fact, Muradji Desai has ordered uh, actually um, cutting the supplies also That's at right. some yeah. point of the laborers. So that was such a repressive regime That's against right. which George fought. Yeah. So George means it was not about the okay whatever with the Nehru policies, yes. but the experience of the um, labor class or working class in Mumbai was altogether different. It was very much repressive. They may be Bombay dock workers or textile workers or uh, 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 municipal workers, whatever. Means when actually Ashok Mehta became first actually, means that uh, his, uh, he has to withdraw his um, um, textile strike. Yes. Sir. Without means um, the government did not hear at all. That's right. That's right. So, though, so that was the, actually the character of the Congress and that not, it was not perceived, but that was very much fact against which George fought yes. actually. Yes. So, the point here, my, I just want to uh, ask you one question is uh, uh, exactly when George realized his uh, uh, leadership potentials? I think that was in Bangalore itself. Okay. In Bombay, it gets more sharpened. He becomes much more uh, confident leader in that sense because he's dealing with the many people. I'll give you just one small example about uh, his all his work or all his political activism was drawn from his heart. He was not really thinking about position or his life. I have seen throughout his life he is doing that kind of a thing. In 1950 January, they conduct a strike of transport workers in Bangalore. Mm. And Dimelo is there, who is a George's uh, yes. guru in that sense. Yes. And Dimelo has just been externed from Bombay to be there. And George is, is so much dedicated to make this, this strike success that he lies in front of the bus. Oh. And he is ready to get crushed. Mm. And so he wants to stop the bus by lying over. Now the same thing is repeated in 1960 yes. strike again. Strike, you know strike. when he jumps on the oh, from the dadar. Right. And I have a photograph in the book which says which shows you that in the Times of India photograph it is uh, where it shows that how his clothes are torn and the policemen are holding yeah. him and they had beaten him. Uh, and in fact uh, he's then he's charged by, uh, for obstructing the railway traffic mm -hmm. and for two months he has been he is jailed. Jail. You yeah. know he remains in the jail and in the jail there is a lot of other atrocities happen you know on him. He's beaten by the by the mm -hmm. convicts and mm -hmm. all the people so uh, that's in 1960 mm -hmm. and then again in 1971 they conduct a tribal uh, demonstration uh, near Sardar Patel Chowk in Delhi mm -hmm. and again the police beats yeah, him up beats him. okay right. and it is again like that mm -hmm. and in 1979 70, 75 77 when he is uh, underground or he is underground hey, he takes the whole uh, resistance movement on himself mm -hmm. and when people tell him that okay your wife has already gone abroad your child is already gone abroad why are you just roaming around the country and uh, you don't fear the, what Indira Gandhi would do because there is a there is a um, uh, declared uh, you know a, in arm over over, yeah. his, uh, oh. over his body and uh, over right. his uh, arrest oh. so he, he, there are friends who is advising him that please go away from this country protect your life and save yourself to fight another day yes. and he says if that is the thing, then I don't want another day. I want to. I want today. Mm. You know, many people in this country, just for the for the sake of being able to fight another day, they have compromised. They have written mercy letters. They have given. They have asked for mercy and and written. I uh, asked for pardon. You know, from the Andaman Nicobar jails. Forget about any anything else. And here. George is saying that there's no another day. Mm. If I have to die, let me die today. I have to. I don't have any fascination for living to fight for another day. Now that is the important George. In fact, George throughout his life mm. fought political battles in this country for the people of this country first, and second from his heart. Mm. 
he was wherever and it is very lohiyait once again uh, wherever there was an occurrence of just injustice he was the first person to arrive there and he was he he there. and there are of course a lot of things happens in the later phase uh, but we will talk about it here yeah but the, uh, the, uh, another thing that i wonder that uh, after leading the national level railway strike why did uh, ai or if uh, all india railway federation actually distance itself from george george was not an insider of railways movement mm. okay uh there is always a guild mentality mm. right you or oh, he is from municipal workers why there is some kind of a territorial war as well and george had succeeded in taking the airf mm. you know so it was something which was uh, many people saw that he was a man passing by mm. he was not really into the railway strike mm. and railway strike and railways also needed a man like him at that time to survive mm. because the the kind of compromises that railway union had already done with the bureaucracy you know so they needed to assert themselves their rights were not being being uh, being being given you know so so they were needed to assert george was a very handy in making them assert their right and george was the only person in the country at that time who was capable enough to make their voices heard and let and bring the and and he knew he not only knew the trade union he knew the larger politics he was a part of jp movement at that yes. time he was part of the he was already an mp and he had so here is a man who has not limited himself only to the trade union movement mm. and I, i i have also written about how airf started taking uh, you know after the strike was over in 1975 when he st he started he was a part of the jp movement so he was uh, incurring lots of telephone bills so airf told him not to incur so many bills because you know how do you fund and he is the president of airf yes. and imagine so so point is that in a sort of taking benefit of george's presence as a president of the part uh, of airf airf was now uncomfortable having him there okay that is the one thing second he was not an insider because he came from the outside yes. he did not become a cadre of uh, railway workers from his uh, factory floor right, kind of right. thing he was brought in as, yes. as, as a leader as, uh, directly as a president yes. so that is the second thing thirdly i think uh, in this country all of us require immediate deliverance mm. okay now when the strike happened some hun some thousands of the people were dismantled yes. okay i mean they were dismissed from the dismissed. job dismissed from the job uh, so these people wanted to be reinstated now jo you once you are uh, the strikes in this country have always happened with the support of the state mm. if the state is not is against you then you cannot neither get anything and 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 railway strike is that about mm -hmm. railway strike did not get anything for the workers because it it was a momentous strike but it did not yield anything to the worker yes. it only because the state was against yeah, you it, complete, yeah. it it against you so so george could not get what the railway workers wanting to have it but he and airf became a world phenomena yes okay george got a whole country wide name because of the it was a momentous achievement of george to conduct that kind of a strike and that too of a, of a worker which is scattered across the country yeah. you know national uh, presence it has so in fact he could do that and that also created in the traditional leadership of airf it created some kind of a jealousy and uh, and so they wanted george to get away and then congress of course plays its own when when they uh, when the when i'm told uh, when the when the emergency was imposed uh, indira gandhi and sanjay gandhi they wanted uh, uh, george to be dismissed as a airf president and they wanted to bring somebody who was uh, who was uh, amenable to uh, to the congress regime as the president of the of the airf so yeah so another thing that i would like to actually elaborate you on uh, george and madhulimesh relationship because it was once in, in the 60s it was they were very much close almost and madhulimesh acted as his not only yeah friend philosopher guide we yeah, can say yeah. and uh, because uh, in uh, when george was uh, minister in bp singh's cabinet yeah. at that time he was in delhi and 
we used to at that time um, Lime was I mean she yeah, retired yeah. from the politics right. and uh, yeah. he was dedicated to writing books That's right. yeah. so we used to go I mean, almost every reporter who those who are covering <laughs> parliament would go to Lime's house yeah. uh, every evening almost just to understand what's happening around and that time though, once in the afternoon I and Sanjeev Sabre uh, Marash Times reported, went to Limay's house and Limay was on the phone and we said, what happened? He, well, he hanged the phone and told us that just talking to George, he has resigned from this Kashmir affairs. I told him that you should have asked me first before. whether to before whether to take up that or not. Okay, fine. He <laughs> said, and then yet. So, but I think it was kind of um, quite strained relationship um, later on. So, what's your overall take on it's George really and Madhu? It's really sad. It's really sad because they really formed a great com company in that sense. You know, uh, in the Bombay when the George was uh, uh, was a trade union activist uh, uh, leader. Uh, all I have seen, they were almost writing later because those times there were no emails or yeah. no telephone calls because you have to, if you are making a trunk call, you have yeah. to do the booking and all yeah, kind yeah. of and it used to take a lot of time. Yes. And I have seen the letters, postcards, same late uh, envelopes uh, as well as the inland letters uh, and they were, they were writing to each other almost every day, you know, kind of thing. And they were not really going uh, without informing each other. Okay. Whatever steps they did, in fact, all the strikes, railway strike or the municipal strike of 1963 or any of that strikes that happened in Bombay, you would see Limier taking a front position. George was the face of the strike. George was a leader of the strike, but Limier was a strategist. Hmm. Okay, Limier was behind the scene stri strategist, uh, even during the railway strike. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 this relationship, which in fact I I don't see much of that kind of a comradeship between the equals in Indian politics. Okay, because this is a, and it was like a, uh, Limier was some ten years senior to George yeah. in that sense. You know, uh, but uh, but by, uh, the moment he came in, uh, and uh, in 1958. Uh, De Mello dies uh, and uh, uh, even before that because in 1950 uh, Five, uh, uh, Limier goes to Goa and, and yeah. as a, as a, as a, as a satyagrahi, and he is arrested there, and he remains there in jail for some, for a few months there. Uh, so, so you you will see that uh, George has played not exactly. Limier writes a letter to George on the death of Dimelo mm -hmm. that uh, you see you are so uh, so heart stricken, and you are thinking in the terms of uh, that uh, uh, Dimelo's death has uh, made you so sad but the remember one thing that if Dimelo met you you also met Dimelo. Hmm. same thing can be said between madhulimiye and, and george, george. Okay. okay if madhulimiye did uh, uh, did almost a uh, uh, was looking after george's needs in the politics as well as in the his personal life george was equally involved with Madhu, madhu's life you know and this uh, uh, in 1977, 79, which in fact uh, Madhu was instrumental in getting him the seat from Mujapurpur and getting elected yes. from there. And secondly, Madhu was also instrumental in sending him to the cabinet of, of yeah. Moraji Bhai. Uh, somehow, relationship between the Prime Minister Moraji Bhai and George improves. Hmm. And the relationship of uh, of uh, Moraji Bhai and Madhu Limi, who was the secretary yeah. of General Secretary yeah. of Janata Party at that time. It, it it deteriorates. Yes. So when that happens, then our friend Madhu Lemieux wants a price hmm. for all what he did to George. Oh. And George says that, uh, okay, if you think so, then, you know, throughout 1978-79, there are barrages of later that Madhu Lemieux is writing to, to, uh, to George, asking him to ditch the prime minister hmm. leave the janta party government he this is not going to add any feathers into your into your politics hmm. all these things that is happening and so you would see that you you somehow the madhulimi and uh, george relationship takes a really nosedive nosedives because of uh, the push and pull of the being in the government and uh, i think uh, madhulimi had in, had thought that he can own George mm -hmm. ideologically as well as uh, as well as uh, politically but uh, George also had outgrew to some extent and uh, uh, and the comradeship in fact 
you know fell down on that kind of a uh, you know uh, conflicting uh, uh, nature okay so what is the difference of uh, non congressism as practiced by lume and as practiced by george i don't see any difference per se because uh, uh, this uh, non congressism george and uh, you see whatever in 70s george is doing uh, limie is part of it mm -hmm. I, i will not say the limie has some kind of freedom rajnarayan is against it yes. okay uh, yeah. rajnarayan is against uh, madhu limie and george for that matter uh, to some extent uh, sm joshi also wants to favor indira gandhi mm -hmm. uh, in uh, and and limie uh, is also in the doubt whether to go with indira gandhi or go to go with the broke, broke away uh, you know congress party you know the kind of a thing but somehow rajnarayan pushes them to go with the break away party uh, uh, congress party rather than with indira gandhi but i have a feeling at that particular moment in 69 to 71 when the indira gandhi is showing some socialist colors uh, these two thought that indira gandhi is a better option and they were in fact veering towards it uh, one of the thing where Uh, George in fact broke away from Indira Gandhi in a real strong way was when he was uh, campaigning against the smugglers of Bombay and he in fact ultimately came to conclusion that uh, uh, Antul Sahab's name came that came oh. in that context uh, mm -hmm. uh, and there are letters that has been exchanged uh, where uh, he says that uh, Indira Gandhi is the kingpin of all these smugglers uh, and so whatever letters i have written her to her asking her to take action against the smugglers uh, in fact sees the boss sees uh, earning mm -hmm. all so yeah. that kind of a things mm -hmm. you know you happens in the politics uh, how much truth is there in yeah. that i would not know nobody knows yeah, this yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. that's uh, other means uh, one question has been so far as uh, um, national level politics of socialists you have gone very much in deep actually but so far when, when it comes to george because george most of the time george fought from bihar and when it comes to bihar yeah. actually you have not gone so deep in bihar's politics particularly or whatever it may be caste war ideological fights the governments um, fights between karpuri thakur and maduli me or this and then it means all those so so and bihar is such a state which is just like uh, tamil nadu is ruled by aidmk or dimk the, the way actually bihar is ruled by the socialist either lalu or nitish and the congress has been completely um, uh, dismissed you see in 1989 george is almost 60 year old now yeah okay uh, 60 is the time when people retire yeah. okay and uh, george has uh, twice won from mujafarpur that time 1979 77 74 77 and again 1980 and 1984 he gets defeated from he he leaves the mujafarpur and goes back to bangalore to win the election but he there also he gets defeated so george uh, is uh, uh, you know at that time is little bit in the political flux he doesn't uh, uh, he is not sure about mujafarpur he is not sure about uh, uh, you know uh, kapuri thakur who is the main force at that time in bihar uh, he is not sure about whether the kapuri thakur will be favoring him or not uh, he needs a backward vote and votes and all kind of a thing um, george in 1970 in 1989 a 60 year old man who is worried about his legacy now okay he writes 1987 uh, 88 87 uh, kapuri thakur dies and uh, george has written a very long obituary on, on, on and beautiful obituary a very heartfelt obituary and he contemplating that uh, this is a 57th year uh, 57 87 is his own 57th yeah, year yeah. Uh, at the age of 57 lohia died yeah so he is now worried about his legacy what legacy he is going to leave his best days are over let me tell you uh, his best days were emergency days his best days were railway strike railway strike and all kind of thing now he is completely dependent on bihar's caste politics okay. to win the election okay mm -hmm. and so he becomes a prisoner to the all the people who are taking you know 1977 election was a national upsurge yeah. okay there was no caste working there was not even george working george name was there he was not even campaigning there yes. you know but by the time 1980 happens uh, somewhat uh, once again the politics becomes so 
so less driven by the ideology hmm. that the whole politic, politics becomes a caste driven thing you know uh, and George knew that whenever there is an agenda driven the all the caste and creed gets away but the once the you political agenda is not there hmm. then the caste and the creeds come you know yes. come either way. and that's what's happening in the Bihar at that time when George is uh, is leading the movement there uh, is leading is uh, so he becomes uh, he needed uh, uh, somebody you know, uh, to 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 depend upon because the Karnataka was rejecting him. He was not there in Karnataka. He was not. He didn't go for Bangalore. He didn't go for. He came from Bangalore, but then Bangalore rejected him. Maharashtra had already rejected all the socialists. Not only George, all the socialists had re had rejected it. So you had uh, uh, some way. You know, be, uh, be, uh, George had no constituents here by that time, and Jayaprakash Tarain and Madhulimi had given him Mujafferpur, and so he wanted to stick to that place. But Mujafferpur had its own caste composition. You know, and so so you. How do you do? How do you go about it? And uh, and 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 to to transform a constituency in this country is not easy. Uh, let mm. me tell you, to bring a development to one constituency, it is not easy. I have done a full uh, big section on, yeah. on on all the people who wrote. Right, right. Know, I have read it. Know, know, particularly of Muzaffarpur, actually. Know, and imagine the and kind of, how he worked tirelessly on each and every each, letter. Each, each of these things. Each, you know, of, this. each of these things. He, but there are so many people in one constituency and each of them have their own problems how can one simple mp solve it you know and that's why you have a, such a great churning of mps in this country you know nobody fights from the same constituency they keep jumping, you know? so so you can't solve the problem of one constituency so you have to jump to the new constituency you have to go to there and that is what is happening with with george george now needs caste blocks to support him Okay, so Nitish Kumar, who was a very small player in 1987, uh, uh, you know, very not, not even a known person, he was trying to, uh, you know, climb the bandwagon of uh, Devi Lal or anything. Thrice, he, uh, uh, thrice he was defeated, defeated I suppose, in the no, uh, assembly election. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so here in 89, because of the BP Singh uh, wave, uh, Nitish Kumar also wins and comes back. But Lalu wins the race and he becomes the chief minister. And uh, Lalu and ya uh, and George is, of course, let me tell you, he's a very humble person. But he is a big name. Mm -hmm. So why would he take the humiliation from Lalu? Yeah, who is Lalu. Just a upstart, right. you know, who just started. In fact, yeah, yeah, in yeah, 77, actually, exactly, exactly, this started. Yeah. Why, why would he take it? Because George has already been a national, international yeah. name. So there was an ego clash, you know. Okay, you might have a cast backing yes. of you, but I have a name which is of my own, you know. So the politics became somewhat ego clash as well. And that once again weird it when, jo when Lalu became such a super primo in Bihar that he could do whatever he wanted to, uh, leaving no space for other political uh, outlets. Well, Lalu so, even bullied um, um, Thakur. Um, Kapuri Thakur. Kapuri Thakur. Kapuri Thakur. He used to call him um, Kapti Thakur. That was, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a later phenomenon maybe. But, but till the time he became the chief minister, um, uh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. before, because 87 Kapuri dies, uh, dies uh, uh. he becomes chief minister only in 90. Yeah, but he was removed because of, uh, uh, as the leader of the opposition because of Lalu, because yeah. we are all Yadavs, why yeah. can't we should lead us? So, so Anyways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what I would say, I, I would see the 80s and 90s, uh, George is uh, uh, is dependent on the local politicians for his survival in Bihar politics. Uh, he is certainly working very hard. He is certainly working very hard to build the Samta party. Uh, but he is dependent on the caste composition of uh, Bihari politics. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, to say that, uh, you know, uh, why... I did not cover so much uh, yeah. of that part. It's also because the best days are 70s, yes. 60s, right. 50s, right. you know. And uh, in fact, I wanted to stop at uh, 1980 itself. Okay. okay. I wanted to stop because a uh, book has the writing itself yeah. had taken 12 years of my life. Oh. And so I was thinking that I would not be able to do the justice to the next 10, 20 years. So I thought that uh, uh, it's better I'll stop at 80, you know. But then somehow uh, Ram Guha, in okay. fact, he insisted that I complete in one volume. Okay. And so I thought that, okay, uh, I will. Uh, he is a mentor to me. And I really, he read every page of the book. Uh, and so I said, okay. So then I started working again on the 80s and 90s. Uh, uh, I wanted to take the crux, uh, uh -huh. not so detailed the way right. I do in the 70s. Yes, right. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh, another thing is, uh, I would like to know, means I mean, only two, three questions are there. Um, another thing is, uh, whether you have actually quite sensitively touched upon all those 
जॉर्ज अफेयर्स मीन्स इन्वॉल्वमेंट्स या इन्वॉल्वमेंट्स नॉट अफेयर्स इन्वॉल्वमेंट सो फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू मीन्स हाउ यू लुक एट जॉर्ज पर्सनैलिटी मीन्स वाई सो मेनी इन्वॉल्वमेंट्स Uh he married very late he married at the age of 43 yeah. uh, uh and Lala Kabir uh, uh who whom he married uh, was daughter of a big politician uh and very ac- academic as well Himayu Kabir uh, who was t- educated in uh, and Gandhi blessed uh, her father's uh, marriage to his, 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 her mother in fact uh, Gandhi was, because they were inter religious marriage Himayu Kabir came from a zamindar family of the, of East Bengal, East Bengal yeah. and uh, um um uh, you know, uh, his wife came from from the hindu uh, who was a shanti niketan uh, you know so um, so so the point to what uh, what happened that uh, uh, george had a series of relationships even in bombay uh, and that's natural he was a he was a charismatic politician uh, who could uh, be equally at home uh, among the taxi workers and in a five star hotel you know kind of a thing he could be part of the any crowd and he was a fearless man you know kind of a thing uh, he his charisma was such that it attracted men and women both in yes. fact, you know so uh, there were people who were part of his uh, his uh, his fan club okay uh, to say that he should not have a relationship and the relationship goes up and down and the, and many people have uh, uh, some uh, uh some uh, you know uh, some kind of a uh, expectations out of relationship and george had a had a massively busy life mm. he couldn't really give time to his relationships or his involvements for that matter so none of the invo- uh, involvements really worked uh, okay in that sense because he is really not into the Yeah. into the women in that sense uh, but, but they were very respectable towards women and uh, none of the women uh, he has had relationship with have been talked in a negative way let me tell you they are very respectably mm-hmm. and they are, they remain friends with George for a very long time uh, and remained in fact uh, all his their life uh, George in some sense uh, uh, married uh, Laila Kabir in a hurry okay uh, he wanted to settle down perhaps there was a lot of pressure and he was also 43 now so he wanted to do that Lala Kabir uh, also uh, wanted to have a husband her childhood was a little disturbed two of her but the both the both her parents of her they were extremely busy people they didn't really they had enormous expectations from the their offspring but they did not really put that kind of a they, uh, you know they were just loading with them with expectations so uh, she was she had her own imagination about the marriage okay she wanted a life of domesticity and George was never domesticated you know never domesticated so he was looking for Or a woman like he writes uh, about Dange's wife, uh, about uh, Joshi's wife, no, S.M. Joshi's, S.M. Joshi's wife, and he had this fascination for a woman who is active but also very loyal to her yes. husband and dedicated <laughs> to her husband. You know, uh, and I think George, uh, I would not say anything, anything, uh, uh, you know, obnoxious about anybody for that matter. But George somehow felt that uh, the kind of uh, women he needed, he didn't get in his life, and uh, so that is the kind of uh, you know, so. Hey, what's the, how many years actually you spent in writing this book? Because I was really, I mean, so this thing odd actually. Uh, while going through the sources, so many books, newspapers, films, the YouTube uh, yeah. channels, <laughs> so many days like Karan Thapar's yeah. interview or what not. It was huge. But did did you refer to any Marathi this thing? Ah, uh, uh, George. Uh, you see, this whole thing began also because uh, George gave me his private papers. Yeah. Right. And those private papers uh, are important repository. In fact, uh, the, my home was full of private papers of that, uh, and it remained with me even today. In fact, I have just uh, given it to uh, you know, uh, you know, it, it remains with me for that matter. Uh, but, his private papers are the backbone of this book mm. okay then i did additional work okay okay i went to elfeston college i went to na- a different mm. archives of the country teen murti has lots of uh, mm. uh, madhulimi's papers and other papers all the socialist papers they are there so th- those papers and then uh, and and george's own paper and then when because i wanted to because nobody remembers what socialists who socialists were then and kind of thing so i needed to give a history of socialist party as well so i needed to go into into the into the private paper collections of jayprakash narayan lohia ramamitra and uh, badri vishal bitti and all kind of people and therefore uh, it took lot of time to understand i looked at the 
newspapers of all these yeah. decades oh. and 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 these yeah, were, you were and these were all uh, microfilms in teen movie yes. you know so and my eyes in fact you know oh. yeah, you know it got almost uh, uh, totally punctured because of this whole thing that i was uh, gazing at so it went on for 12 years and also because i was a in a full time job i was at a university teaching i am uh, so in fact uh, also it added into the elongation but i think perhaps uh, uh, i wanted to do a matured work not exactly a chronicle of uh, uh, of uh, you know the the his his acts uh, or a no memoir kind it was because i i did not really have any experience with him uh, so i think uh, it required that kind of a time you know it, it required that kind of a time but 12 years of uh, uh, investment uh, I feel it's worth it. Worth, right? yeah. great work, great Thank work you. actually. Yeah. This uh -huh. I was really so means I think this is the first book on George because there is yes. no even book on railway strike I suppose. Uh, there is a book on there okay. is a, there is a book on railway okay, strike. Okay, this is a PhD thesis by some Australian. Ah, uh, that's what I mean. Yeah. Not a mm, not a book. Not a not book, a book actually, in that sense. Yes, that somebody uh, yeah. because it was a very Massive, momentous. Yes. Uh, that's right. Uh, this thing. But there is there is no book on the yeah, thesis is okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was also published in the book form. Yeah. But but uh, yeah. that is a very thesis academic. Yeah, work. yeah academic very, work. Oh, yeah, exactly. It is. So that yeah. what's your next project now? I'm working on on four pamphlets. Uh, 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 Sir Sayyid Khan did a pamphlet in eight in eighteen uh, hundred. 58 immediately after the revolt and he wrote a pamphlet called uh, uh, the causes of indian revolt in 1909 gandhi writes another pamphlet which is called hind swaraj in 1924 savarkar writes another pamphlet called hindutva in 1936 ambedkar writes another pamphlet which is called annihilation of caste I am trying to compare these four pamphlets okay. and trying to study what are the focus of these people in these in these pamphlets what are their main concern how do they conceive indian hmm. and what are their their uh, who are the indians for these people that is the one thing what are the kind of agenda driven writing these people these politicians and i call them all of them politicians and these politicians can indulge in and what are the kind of harshness of language that they adopt in conveying their idea yes. you know because each of these pamphlets are a strong worded pamphlets yeah, really. you know very strong pamphlets read uh, uh, savarkar or read uh, ambedkar or read gandhi or gandhi, read amar khan gandhi calls yeah. uh, british uh, parliament, parliament as a messiah as a prostitute that's right <laughs> so you have uh, and uh, and and amar khan in fact uh, all these and these all these are pamphlets who have transformed indian politics all these pamphlets remain alive to do, to did to this day and they remain our main political currents so the pamphlets are such pamphlets have transformed indian politics i want to i am writing a book on those four pamphlets yeah fantastic thank you yeah so this book is available uh, online offline everywhere and please do uh, guy mother uh, buy it and please uh, like share and subscribe in the in the yes. yes please do like share and subscribe in the journal and thank do, you and do buy the book do buy the book <laughs> <laughs> and read it yeah and write review on the amazon thank you <laughs>